live. Hello for the third episode yes. of Real Talk with the Parentis. If we don't rename it again. <laughs> I'm going to start with what I promised last week, and that is the question of a friend who asked, how do you learn to speak up, hold your boundaries, learn to love your husband instead of running thoughts of divorce in your head? Kind of like being in a boat together but blowing up my escape boat to be ready nearby. There's many questions in there, actually. I, I think so, too, right yeah. now that I'm rereading it. Yeah. Can um, you re read it again? Read it again so I can sure. capture it better. How do you learn? You can actually look at it. How yeah. do you learn to speak up? Hold your boundaries. Learn to love your husband instead of running thoughts of divorce in your head. Kind of like being in a boat together but blowing up my escape boat to be ready nearby. Right. That's interesting. When I first heard the question, I thought it was more of a like a divorce question me too but reading it again it's she's talking about her first thing that she mentions is how do you learn to speak up how do you learn to like that's what that's what's there it's not a divorce the divorce is kind of like the the symptom you know it, it's kind of like what happens when that's not there yeah so do you, so, you want to speak to that or yeah the learn to love you know, I'm, people probably consider me outspoken, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the truth about that. How many times did I tell you I didn't speak up or mm -hmm. say something? Mm -hmm. I think this is true for all women. And I'm going to just say in my own way, right? If I was having a conversation, because this is not a canned answer by all means, but I think women's way of looking at the world is quite complex. We're noticing many things at a different time. Speaking up, it depends on what it is. First, I'll say this just to premise it with something real, like speaking up about something, I guess, of how do I speak up? I guess it's on a subject. That sounds very masculine and linear, speak up, right? So you must have you must have awareness that there's something there. You to must say, have an yeah. intention. Yeah. You must feel that you're powerful enough to pierce through. You mm -hmm. you, there's so much inside of ability to speak up that actually feels masculine in some ways and not naturally feminine. Because we as women, definitely me, but many of my friends, clients, etc., we're kind of ha 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 all over the place right like i notice the background i'm noticing your shirt um here i come about the clothes again i'm noticing like i have my attention is more like omni attention omni yeah potent or whatever you would yeah. say yeah omnipresent yeah and speaking up is very direct so i think that's the first thing that speaking up is connected to really knowing that there is something within you that is important, validating that your perspective is important, and then courage to express it no matter what it produces as a reaction. Um, to be most basic, I would say this, speaking up, becomes easier when you're willing to deal with people's reaction. And I think that's an important, I think, I think that's an important aspect of being a powerful human, extraordinary human, being willing to say something, make mistakes, learn from them, scale back, promise, repair. I love that parent. There's a parenting coach that I listen to time and time again. And she says, there's no such thing as perfect parent. Uh, what makes it, what makes parenting good is being willing to repair it. Repair the, the mistakes. Or, exactly. Yeah. So what I would say, speaking up, if you're willing to scale back and see the reaction that the other person is having out of what you are saying or you speaking up, and I'm assuming this is inside of the relationship since it's connected to the right. divorce it, question. It must be, yeah. If you're willing to say it, 
and allow the reaction and then dialogue with your husband, I guess, or partner, uh, husband, husband in this case because it's a divorce, divorce yeah. right? Then, then you can have, you, you're more likely to speak up. So being willing to be with response, I think would allow you to take mm -hmm. that first step. Um, and the first step of speaking up requires courage. Yeah. And courage is not about not having fear. Courage is about having fear and then taking the step anyway. Yeah. And one last thing I will say about that is only the action will actually produce result. So if you are to connect with someone and that there's something for you to say and speak up, consider it's not even about speaking up so much as it is about connecting and expressing mm -hmm. something that is there. The second thing you say here is hold your boundaries. So, again, I don't know, right? I, don't I mean, know. we're yeah, not having a know. conversation, so this is a <clears throat> bit of a guessing game. Yeah. But I guess let's let's bring it home. Well, if I had something to say to you, yeah, and I was worried about speaking up, and I wanted to hold my own boundary, it would look something like this. Okay, I have something to say. Can you please? try to minimize the reaction to it. Can you please just let me express it? Because it sounds really bad in my head, but I'm committed to us connecting. Mm -hmm. And I feel that there's something for me to say, that I feel honors me and yeah. what's important to me. Yeah. I think that will cover both the speaking up and the boundary part. But what do you yeah, have to say? Yeah, and, and it's, it's an interesting thing because sometimes you're absolutely right about the courage. I mean, everything, but I, I you know, it, it really does take courage. Mm -hmm. And it does, it, it takes courage to speak, and then it takes courage to allow the person to have a reaction. Because let's say you've been doing things one way in the relationship for three years. And maybe it worked for the first year, but now it hasn't worked for two years, but you didn't want to ruffle the feathers, so you haven't spoken, you know? And now you're going to speak. Well, the other person might be perfectly happy the way it's been for three years. So now they're going to have a reaction to what you're saying. And, but the reaction isn't necessarily to what you're saying. It's their own reaction. I mean, it's, it's their own yeah. stuff. Well, so I there's a courage to speak. And then there's the courage to allow, you could say, the, the reactions or the impact of what you just said. Yeah. So this is really brilliant that you're saying that. And I think it's important to say, just because we don't know the range of people's yeah. training of anyone listening, when you speak or take any action in life, it's bound to create something. It's either creating something, if it's empowering, if it comes from the, if it comes from the good space, it very often lands well. But if it comes from fear, it's likely to provoke reaction. And it's really okay that even your speaking up comes from fear at first. Like, I, I wanna just validate that. Mm -hmm. Speaking up takes enormous courage. And we are not born trained. So that's something that I wanna really preface for everybody. We're not born trained. We're not trained on how to be human. We're not trained on how to be in relationships. We're not trained on how to parent, etc. So. What I would say to you is that you can, I mean, you can even mock this. This is what I would do, actually. I would probably even mock this with a close friend, confidant, coach, therapist, etc. And then I would talk to the person. I mean, if you're married to him, and this is just my way of thinking about marriage. We are really transparent with one another. And as a matter of fact, I, I had to scale back because I think there were a lot of things I was transparent about that you didn't need to know. <laughs> but the only way I learned that is by being, by, and trying, by doing yeah. it, by trying. So yeah. I really want to encourage you to say it and then get a reaction and then get support if that didn't land the way you wanted it to mm -hmm. land. You know, you have to be willing to make mistakes. I think that's the first yeah. step. Um, and even boundaries, oh, this is such a, you 
want to say something before I yeah talk about I mean this. I want to say something because I, I I mean you know it's an interesting thing because the next thing she says she talks about the boundaries and she says learn to love your husband instead of running thoughts of divorce right so the, there's a commitment to love inside of that yeah that's like that's what's driving this whole question is that that commitment to love to loving right um, and you know sometimes. For me to see the world, I gotta clean my glasses. It's kind of like like I just gotta do the work of cleaning the glasses. Yeah. Because otherwise, it it might look okay, but it's spotty, right? So there's so a version of that potentially that, that needs to happen where you start to focus on either focusing on the things that you like as opposed to things that you don't like, and to shift that experience of love, right? Um, or even you know in the speaking up, the things that she knows she's not speaking up about, right? In starting to speak those up, the experience of love will also occur because she will also be more in integrity with herself. So there'll be a more of a space for her to even be able to love as opposed to a space where she feels currently probably some version of, of constraint, Yeah, you could say. I have a slightly different perspective perspective of that and you know I, I want to speak um, to how different that is for women you know because there's a range of things that that one can be withholding or not being free to say and focusing on the good things but invalidating the bad things mm -hmm. might not work in every case because if what if what if what you are um, um, tolerating is actually not healthy for you i agree so i want to first define love love is not a verb it's not like loving him you actually can't control that when you clear what's between you and him love arises love is present so i think we have a very inaccurate language of like i love you which is It'd be more accurate to say, when I'm with you, love is present. And if it's not present when I'm with you, there must be something I'm withholding and not saying. In this case, most likely, like I'm not saying yeah. something. Or it must be something that, um, that I'm expecting and not getting. Or some or, resentment that's present. Or maybe some resentment. Holding on to something from the past, yeah. And I tell you, like, Jason and I had this commitment since we were married to not go to bed incomplete, meaning, like, with something unsaid. And I think there were probably, like, less than five times yeah. in our entire marriage of 12 years that we said, like, you know, <laughs> dang he, it, not to curse. <laughs> Dang it, let's just go to bed. And even then we would be even like, then, you know? like, I know we're upset, but we got to go to bed. I'm just going to bed anyway, right? But like acknowledging exactly. it. Exactly. And me like going and sleeping in a living room. And, <laughs> him, it's like, and you know, I think, I, I don't know, I'm not going to speak for all women, but I'll speak for myself. I am so darn weird. <laughs> I, when I get mad, I am puffing waiting for Jason to just come and ask me what's wrong. And when he's not doing that, this is how, this is my reactive self, my ego identity, if you will. This is how it works. This is how it plays out. So something happens and I'm mad. And then I'm waiting for you to notice. And then I go like, mm, uh, and then I'm talking. Uh, uh, it's all abrupt. And if you're not reacting, you're like minding your own business or whatever. Then I go like, I'm so mad. And then if you go like, okay, got it but not reacting to that, it makes me more and more mad. So I had to learn over time to just be like, darn it, come hug me, yeah. <laughs> you know, come hug yeah. me. And I think it was Alison Armstrong that I listened to. She had this really wonderful talk with women when she was talking about when we get mad, she said we disconnect from our heart. And it goes from being mad and detonating and rah, to like being like, come, please, please, come, come, love me, please. 
Yeah, and but we don't. I mean, at <gasps> least in those moments, I don't hear any of that. I hear you're upset. Okay, it's got nothing to do with me because I didn't do anything in that moment. I was minding my own business. So you know, what have I done? So I'm just gonna ignore it and do my yeah. own thing because because I don't. I'm not um, wired personally. I I can't speak for all men, but I'm not wired to, you know hear you being mad X-ray as a vision yeah, <laughs> yeah as a you know i just want some can you like this is yeah. maybe nothing to do with you but i just need a hug right now right it's it's you know more I mean? than, it's more than that it's more than that and now you know i'm sorry this is not supposed to be about my work right but one of the things that i really learned uh, with my teachers is that when I'm in that space, and that's a reactive self, it promotes your reactive self. I talk about this with my clients all the time. So my reactive self promotes your reactive self. And yeah. for those of you who don't know, um, Jason's mother suffered a mental illness. So when when was she diagnosed? Uh, January 86. So I was, what, eight years, eight old? years old? Yeah, seven, 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 eight. She had uh, paranoid schizophrenia. She would hear voices it's telling her all sorts of stories from that yeah. I am dead to there's lasers at my school, Oof, killing yeah. people, things, yeah. you know, from all sorts. So, I mean, this is the whole conversation we can have about your childhood. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, but having a mother who was unsafe had Jason also be able to tune out from when women are loud or detonating or whatnot. So, and it's it's both good and bad because yeah. I think it's good in a sense that if you weren't that way, I'm pretty sure you would not be able to tolerate me at all because I can get really mad. <laughs> or probably any <laughs> I am woman, intense. right? Not just you, but I am among probably more intense women. Yeah. I guarantee you that there are women who are much softer, who have a different ego that is more optimistic, loyal, and whatnot, or righteous. Mine is just angry vicious mm -hmm. so when i get like that your defense mechanism before we learned about ourselves and got the training that we got allowed you to not take it personally to just disconnect and not hear it but it's also i think what sometimes gets in a way of yeah, you seeing I, I and being up. able to know that i need your love and attention because your automatic thing is to just put the wall up and not see me and Correct. not feel me. And ignore, and ignore. wall it off. Yeah. yeah, so I think our conversation drifted. I'm worried about what we were saying. We were talking about boundaries and stuff. And speaking up. And speaking up. The bottom line is re it's really not that simple, but I think it's important that you take a risk. I would say it that way. Yeah. You take a risk and you speak up and you see where it leads you and Sometimes you might have to have a mediator um, or you each have mm -hmm. to have a coach or you can have one coach. I, I coach a couple that um, very often have, you know, the wife would say, my husband did this. And I say, okay, your husband aside, what can you see in this? What is your part in, in this relationship? And when I talk to her husband, I do the same thing. I love them both unconditionally. And I think they have a pretty decent marriage. And part of that is that I never, ever cross the line of making either of them wrong. Right. So um, the point is, it is a risk. It does require courage. And I encourage you, if I may be frank, I encourage you to speak up. Because if you don't, you are living with somebody you're not fully connecting with and then the possibility of what marriage and partnership can allow for is not something you can tap into and frankly love cannot be present if there's something withheld mm -hmm. and something in a way yeah. i love i think it's Rumi that says um uh you how does what's the quote uh you can only remove the barriers to love essentially so that's what I yeah. would say. It's really great. You know, I, as you were talking, I had one thought, which was, you know, we're, we keep talking about speaking, speaking, speaking. It's really communicating, right? It might be that speaking in words is too difficult. Um, and this has even happened between you and us, when there was something I needed to tell you, 
And I was like, I'm writing this because I don't know that I can speak it. And I would, I send you a message. I spoke up, I communicated to you, but it was in written form yeah. as opposed to spoken form because that was easier for me. It, I, it felt less difficult and I managed to communicate it that way. Yeah. And, and then it moved a bunch of things forward, right? That's a really good point. A really good point. I mean, it is sometimes, when there are confrontational conversations in general, sometimes it's better to write them down. I think we're also more able to, when it's written, to see what may be away from our point and mm -hmm. then take it out and be yeah. more, um, more clear precise and diligent with, and precise yeah. with our language and take away what might be hurtful. I very often, when I write confronting emails and stuff, would ask you to look at, like, am I offended? Because it's my if my intention is not to offend someone, I don't want to put something in. Yeah. But we, I think inside of our ego, we all have ego, uh, note to all of you, is inside of our ego or any kind of, you know, just wanting to survive, we sometimes sneak in this little thing of like being right, of like, yeah, yeah like I'm sorry, but it's also, you know, <laughs> So that's what I will say about that. Let me just see what else uh, she said. I think that's the most important thing. Absolutely. Like the speaking up and the boundaries and learn to love. Like don't try to love him. Uh, just clear the way and then see, lo let love arise. And then when love arises, see if your relationship works. If you are fulfilling your idea of what the marriage provides or what the intention of the marriage is. Jason and I have this commitment to having a great life as individuals and then as a couple. And I will just share this. When we had a really hard time, two years ago, right, was it? I had a really hard time in marriage. Like I felt depleted. Um, there was something Jason did that, that felt like betrayal to me. It was a pretty big deal. And I had a, I needed space to come back from that. And I remember you being so open to whatever I needed to heal that. And I will, like, that just moves me mm. to tears. I remember you even saying, like, go, even if you go for, you know, go away for six months if you need to and then we'll figure it out in that I heard your commitment to our relationship but I also heard loud and clear your commitment to me and my freedom and I love that I love that I don't know anyone who seeks prison inside of marriage or partnership or any relationship and I think relationships could be prisons and we sometimes create our own prisons but right day to day I think it's important to see where you imprison yourself because at the end of the day it's never the person it's you and I so appreciate that on one hand you know I created this commitment that is a lifetime commitment which you can say eliminated so much of what else I can do, right? Because being married is not being single anymore and all that that implies. And it could look like prison, but it's actually inside of the marriage that I regain my freedom. Mm -hmm. And I learned so much about myself. And that's an opportunity of partnership. It doesn't have to be marriage, but any partnership between any two people that in resolving conflicts when they arise, having courage to speak up, taking that risk, and working through together can bring intimacy that is not available any other way, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, I was more committed to your happiness than to keeping the structure of marriage or status quo yeah. is really where it came down to, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, I think that's so important, and for women more so than men. I actually think the men are more committal than women. I wanted to commit before I committed and was actually married, and then I was the one who talked about divorce more and in a hurtful ways and had to stop doing that because every time we had a problem, I was like, okay, you know, I'll pack my stuff and leave. <laughs> that was my way of dealing with it. 
Now, of course, then come kids and all of that, it becomes all more complicated. But I think it's important for women, perhaps, because we were suppressed far longer than men, to experience that freedom and even consider parting from a relationship if a relationship doesn't empower her. Not so that you can get divorced or not so that you can work on your boat, as you said, to escape. But that so that you escape. can choose your yeah. commitment day in and day out. Yeah. Time and time again. Yeah. So, anything else to say? Because I think. We no, I think. Uh, I just hope, you know, this conversation was, hope, was hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> we are hoping that this conversation was hopeful. <laughs> well, I get well in a way, well, right? Yeah. Helpful. Helpful. Um, you know, and, um, you know, and, and if there's something is would like us to talk about, let us know. If you have another question or something, this is actually a good way to start conversations. And yeah. if we can be a contribution with our experience and knowledge and background, then that would be great.